so today's task is to kind of learn a little bit about JavaScript uh, organization. And on the left, we have Notepad++ with a simple JS file, followed by an index.html that points to said JS file. And over here on the right, we just have Chrome browser with inspector tool. So in the beginning, we're kind of taught to do a very basic JavaScript function, and we can have something called do something. This will do something very trivial. Uh, we'll do a hello world right there. And if we refresh uh, over there, we don't get anything because we have to call it. So let's do something. And if I hit F5, we get a hello world. So at, in, when you're first learning, that's awesome. You got something to do something in JavaScript in a browser. So the problem is, is when you have two of them and one says hello, one says goodbye. So what happens here? Well, the second one wins because what's happening here is we have two functions named the same thing in the same namespace and the second one actually redefines the first one. And so what we want to try to avoid is putting everything in a global namespace. The chief reason for that is because you're going to use third party libraries, libraries that you may have written and you may already have a do something in the global namespace and it just gets really confusing on, on all this stuff. So we want to avoid that. So one quick win we can do here is actually set uh, do something equal to a function. And we call this an anonymous function because, well, this function right here doesn't have a name. It does have a variable name. And if we save that, we're back to where we started. We have a hello world. So we haven't really gained anything yet. So what we could do is kind of wrap our, our functions or uh, variables or whatever we're going to do into what we call the module. So let's call this module one and something else you can do in JavaScript is call a define a function and immediately call it and so we'll do so by wrapping this function and then putting the uh, double parentheses right afterwards so when we run this we still get our hello world even though it doesn't look like we've called a function we really have so what we've done here is we've taken a module and we've gotten it out of the global namespace and we've put it into we've created this little private zone right here so I'll go ahead and put private zone and uh, it's really difficult if not uh, impossible to for somebody to alter this so what we can do is we can come in here and we can do our uh, function well, let's see uh, do something yeah that's a good name and we'll set that equal to an anonymous function and doing something uh, trivial. Doing something. And when we refresh this, do something doesn't run. The reason is, is because, again, we get to um, have to call that. So now this is immediately executing hello world. It's going here and then doing something. So that's interesting, but it's not ideal. What we would like to do is actually return from here and then call do something externally so because we call this the private zone um, let's um, name this um, public do something and then do something is in the private zone so we kind of have this mapping here so if we want to call uh, the internal do something here we can come down here and say module one dot public do something and when we refresh that it's doing something now if we were to um, just try to call do something it's not going to work if we were to go, try to take off the public here and just call that internal one it's not going to work it has no idea so what we can do here is we can define public methods and we can expose or sorry private methods and expose them publicly like this so very often you may uh, want to have things that are only internal or private to your module and the public doesn't need to see everything so a lot of times maybe we'll have a start method and um, we'll have we'll, we can mirror that in here so we'll change this to start and this will be a little more meaningful. Start and then module one dot start. And maybe uh, instead of calling it module one, we can call it app. So now we can come down here and this says app dot start. And when we refresh over here, 
hello world and we're starting so let's go ahead and get rid of hello world we get the idea that it's immediately executing and our app is starting so what we've done here is we still have a, 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 a global member here and that's the app but everything else that we do won't have to worry about colliding with everything else um, you know let's say we have like a format method or something like that it won't collide with somebody else's um, library because we've wrapped it in this and by the way this pattern is called the revealing module pattern and so one thing uh, you can do also is you can uh, extend this app um, from another module so if we have our app and we do module 2 and we do the exact same pattern here And forgive me while I type all this. Um, what I can actually do is I can say, you know what? Why don't you take the app in as a parameter? And now I can actually do um, app dot do something else here as a function. And now when I do app start, well, I guess we should give it something to do here. Now we can do app dot do something else. And those are in two completely mo uh, different modules. In fact, we could take module two and put that in a different file altogether. And that way everything is really clean and modular. And that's again, why it's called the module pattern. So uh, again, to review, we have a private zone by uh, doing it like this. And we have a public zone by returning functionality here. In fact, this module doesn't have a public interface whatsoever. So even if we did module to dot well there is no dot because what we would want to do is to return a json object and if we wanted to do something else publicly let's just call it foo for right now we want to map that to uh, an internal thing um, we can do so in fact we can get even more convoluted i believe and we can do module two dot foo and sure enough we can kind of map some plumbing through there. So anyway, that is the uh, basics of what I want to show you today, that you can do anonymous functions. Uh, you can have immediately executed functions. You can pass in modules uh, to each other, and it keeps everything in a public or private zone, however you want. And you can use this return here to do the mapping between your public and private. And again, you could have 10 private methods and only one external, maybe just the start and everything else is internal. And then later on, uh, you have your uh, libraries in a very nice uh, namespaced way. And that is what I want to show you today. Thanks.